In this module, we look at the molecular events that lead up to replication of DNA molecule. First of all, let's look at the requirements for replicating a DNA molecule. These requirements are fairly similar to making a photocopy of a document. So what are the requirements for photocopying a document? We need the original. We need the original document and we need the original DNA strand. We need the machinery. In case of photocopying, of course, we need the photocopier. In case of replicating DNA, duplicating DNA, we need the appropriate enzymes. We need the raw material. In case of photocopying, we need the toner and we need the blank papers. In case of DNA, we need nucleotides to form the new DNA strand. Energy. In case of photocopying, electricity provides the necessary energy. energy. In case of DNA replication, as I've mentioned earlier, it's the breaking of the pyrophosphate bond that releases huge amount of energy, which is used to synthesize the DNA polymer. Initiator, we need an, something to initiate the process. In case of photocopying, it's the person who presses the start button. In case of DNA, it's slightly different, maybe not the best analogy, but it is a primer that is required to initiate the DNA replication. Let's look at what I mean by that. First of all, as we know, DNA is a double-stranded molecule. First step is separating the two DNA strands because the information, the genetic information of DNA, it carries as a sequence of nucleotide bases and they, can, they will not be revealed till the two DNA strands separate. The enzyme that causes the separation of two DNA strands Remember, there are hydrogen bonds holding the two DNA strands together between the bases. A makes double bond, two hydrogen bonds with T, and G makes three hydrogen bonds with C, cytosine. So the enzyme that is responsible for separating two DNA molecules is called helicase. It unwinds, it separates the two DNA strands. The next issue becomes replicating the DNA. It so happens that there is no known DNA polymerase, no enzyme that can start the replication of DNA molecule on its own. It needs help. It needs a primer. Primer is basically a short sequence of polynucleotides complementary to the DNA template, but this strand is made up of RNA nucleotides. We already know RNA nucleotides are different than DNA nucleotides. They have a different type of sugar. And instead of T, we have U in RNA. So the first step is formation of the small primer. I will point that out. Here is the primer that is being made by the primase. This is the name of enzyme that is making the small primer. The next requirement is that now we can extend this, this little primer and form the new DNA molecule. That is done by a type of DNA polymerase which is called DNA polymerase 3. As you know, the v DNA polymerase, it can only synthesize the DNA strand from 5' prime to 3' prime end. We have already established that in one of our previous modules. So notice that there is a 3' prime hydroxyl available here. DNA polymerase settles on this, this molecule, the DNA-RNA hybrid, and extends the 3' prime end, and new DNA molecule is made. This process basically results in part of the DNA, which is hybrid, which has DNA-RNA hybrid. We have old DNA strand, and we have the new DNA which has just formed complementary to the old DNA molecule. Let's look at other players that play contribute to formation of the new DNA. For one thing, the helicase, which is separating the two DNA strands, it cannot maintain the two strands to stay, stay separate. Remember, we talked about this, the free energy, 
all systems come to have a tendency to attain the lowest energetically favorable configuration. And the lowest energy, energetically favorable configuration would be formation of hydrogen bonds. So we need something to prevent that. There are special proteins called single-stranded DNA binding proteins. Here we can see them in black. They bind DNA strands and keep them from coming back together. When the two DNA strands come together and form those hydrogen bonds, it's called annealing of the DNA. These proteins, single-strand DNA binding proteins, prevent that from happening. So, as you can see in the diagram, we have some issues regarding replicating DNA. One strand can be made without any problems because the synthesis of this DNA strand is in the direction in which DNA molecule is opening or separating. So, the other strand is, if you want to call it, the is in, synthesis of the other strand is in the wrong direction, meaning that it is going in the opposite direction to the direction of DNA opening. DNA is opening like a zip uh, present in our clothes. So, the strand which can be synthesized continuously is called the leading strand, leading template strand. The here we are synthesizing DNA, the 3 prime hydroxyl is here. This strand is going to be made in one go. The complementary strand, as we know DNA is anti-parallel double helix. So, this, the other strand, complementary strand to the leading strand will have 5 prime end opposing to the 3 prime end. So, this 3 prime end, when we synthesize the primer, we can only synthesize in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and when that happens, we only have a little room to make DNA by the action of DNA polymerase 3. As the DNA to DNA strands separate the and it becomes available for the action of primase and DNA polymerase, the other strand which is which we are going to call the lagging strand, it is made in smaller pieces. As you can see, there is a dilemma during the replication. We need to get rid of these RNA primers. Also, these RNA primers not only in lagging strand right here, but also in the leading strand. So, this is one dilemma. The other dilemma is how do you synthesize the lagging strand? We will look at those in uh, more detail in the subsequent uh, module.